The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has called on intending pilgrims to remain patient to ensure the smooth conduct of the biometric data capturing exercise. NACON Chairman Barstabdulai Mukhtar Muhammad made the plea during visits to centers for the data capturing in the FCT. I also want to commend uh, the Saudi Consulate in Kano and the Embassy here in Abuja for their cooperation so far on this exercise. I appeal to the pilgrims to remain calm, uh, to be patient. Everybody will be captured and uh, let them follow the simple instruction being given to them by their respective Pilgrims Welfare Board Commission and agencies. I also want to appreciate the State Board also for uh, facilitating the activity. Director of the FCT Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, Mala Muhammad Bashir, who was on the entourage of the chairman, advised pilgrims to be law-abiding to ensure a hitch-free exercise. For them to come early so they will complete in time. You are aware that in a couple of weeks we are going to start your lifting. And they should be patient enough because everybody will be captured. Because people are saying that maybe we cannot beat the time. It's not like that. The biometrics data capturing is underway in nearly 20 states. Some of the intending pilgrims bear their minds on the biometric data capturing exercise. It's really nice and it's good too and it's moving very well. They attend to everybody well and everybody is getting nice treatment there. And we that we are going for the pilgrimage, we should believe that it's something to go with the patients and exercise patients so that we should earn the road of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the meantime, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has announced the extension of pilgrims' registration deadline to the 25th of July 2018. A statement by NACON Head of Public Affairs, Fatima Sanda Usara, said the extension is to allow those who made deposits to complete their payment for registration. The statement further said NACON opened the window to accommodate all those who are yet to start payments. It then urged those affected to take advantage of the period before it expires. The gesture also applies to state pilgrim sports and the licensed tour operators. With the airlift of pilgrims to Saudi Arabia expected to start this month, NACON has held a strategic meeting with the airliners contracted for the operation as well as other stakeholders. But if we become professionals, will this happen? Addressing the meeting, NACON Chairman Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Mohammed pleaded with stakeholders to be more proactive in carrying out their responsibilities. With the small number, if we are not organized and we don't pray and we don't cooperate, we may have challenge that we cannot even lift those small number. And then we'll, become, we'll come back and be lamenting. Imagine, when there were 90,000, we are lifting and finished. And now there are just 30,000 or 35,000. One or 2,000 are left behind. Don't look at that small number. Consider the 500, the 20 that you have, the 1,000 that you have, as if you have 100,000. Give them the same treatment. Give them the same energy. Put in the same effort to make sure that everything went well. Speaking earlier, NACON Commissioner of Operations, al Haj Abdullah Modibo Saleh, said the meeting is expected to fashion our ways for a successful outing in the 2018 Hajj exercise.
The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria has called on its staff who retired from service recently to use the knowledge gained while in the service of the Commission for the Development of Society. Nakon Chairman Baristabila Mukhtar Muhammad stated this at a valedictory session in honor of the retirees. The chairman was represented by the Commissioner for Policy, Personnel Management and Finance, Dr. Adebayo Yusuf. Retirement is a good thing as you introduce one to another aspect of life after having experience in the public service. It is not a death sentence as other people would look, would look, would like to see it. Thank God all of you are alive and healthy. This is your most important asset at retirement. I hold you therefore to constructively engage yourself at retirement. On their part, NACON board members extolled the virtues of the retirees. There are other people who retired before. There are other people who are forced to leave their jobs. There are people who were arrested as they were retiring. There are people who are dismissed from their services. None of this is applicable to any one of you. I would say I appreciate knowing you. I sincerely am happy that Allah crossed our path together. And I assure you, this will not be the end of my relationship with you personally. And I believe with a number of us. The retirees were presented with gifts as a mark of honor. I'm sure in the next few days now, we'll be on his own. The entire members of the commission congratulate you. On behalf of the retirees, Dr. Ishaq Ajao Golagade appreciated Nakon for making their retirement memorable. We want to sincerely beg everybody, if in the course of our job we have offended any of you, please forgive us. If we have done anything good to you, all praises goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah continue to bless all of us. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has commenced the training of its staff on financial crimes and transparency in Hajj affairs. The training is being carried out in collaboration with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Flagging of the program, NACON Chairman Baristabila Mukhtar Mohammed, represented by Dr. Ibrahim Sudengi, urged NACON staff to take advantage of the training exercise. Usually in such gathering, it is uh, educative and uh, it is also a kind of academic exercise. You are free to say whatever uh, you can say. Uh, have bearing in mind uh, freedom of information that and in the constitution the lawyer will know freedom of speech etc etc. Speaking earlier in his welcome address EFCC Acting Chairman Ibrahim Magu, represented by Dr. Laden Usman, assured Nakon of their support and urged participants to cooperate with them in the course of the training. This training shall expose the staff and management of Nakon to the offenses that constitute financial crimes and corrupt acts in the discharge of their duties. I can assure the management of Nakon that this training shall help you to have a workforce that will carry out its duties with utmost professionalism in in accordance with the mandate of the Commission. The training will feature the following courses, elements of financial crime, ethical judgment and manifestation of corrupt practices and its consequences among others. <laughs> The National Hatch Commission of Nigeria, NAKAN, is putting in place necessary arrangements to ensure that airlift operations for the 2018 Hajj is hit free. In view of this, the Commission is providing training to members of its various committees and stakeholders involved with the Hajj operations. One of such stakeholders is the licensed tour operators. In order to keep them abreast of developments, NAKAN organized a training workshop for them on e track system. This was on Wednesday, the 11th of July, 2018, at the National Mosque Conference Hall, Abuja. The e-track system, which is introduced by Saudi Authority, requires that all information about pilgrims and services to be rendered must be provided and made accessible through a computerized system. It is a prerequisite 
for the issuance of a visa. It's going to be paid electronically. So if you Speaking at the event, Narcon Chairman Barista Abdullahi Mukhtar Muhammad said the training is to update the tour operators about changes made in the e-track system by Saudi Arabian government. He then urged them to always use the e-track system and avoid doing transactions manually. If you go outside the electronic system and engage yourself in any other mode of financial transaction, you are on your own because certainly nobody will defend you, nobody will speak for you. Even if you are demanding for extra service, for those of you that are doing A+, plus, uh, A tent, the payment of all those services will also be electronically generated. So we have to be very careful. While stressing on the need to promote professionalism in their businesses, the Nakan chairman called on the two operators to adopt modern ways of managing their activities. We should do it in the modern way and we should do it with all professionalism that is required. And we should do it by keeping records. We should also try to do things that even if you are not there as a CEO or as a manager of the company, the record will always speak for you because you may never know when the record will become handy. On the biometric capturing of pilgrims' data going on across the states, Barista Abdullahi Mukhtar said the tour operators can take their customers to any center close to them. So if you have customers in those states, you don't have to move them from wherever they are. You understand? To, to come to Abuja or to come to Kano or to come to Lagos because your office is there, you want their biometric to be captured there. Just organize and direct them to go to the nearest biometric center uh, in their states. The e track training was conducted by the Nakan ICT unit. I see your passport, I use your passport number to save your picture. Issues discussed generated comments, observations, and questions from participants. In an interview, Nakan heads of licensing division Ali Dushuti and that of two operators, Ibrahim Idris, underscored the importance of the training. The belief is this, once we are able to train those who are in charge of Hajj operations, the end result is going to be Hajj Maburu. And this is what the Commission is striving to achieve every day, every time and every year. Hajj management is all about IT and this IT is it, uh, it always uh, there is always advance they introduce many things every day so what we did last year may not be the same this year therefore we need to bring all the tower operators together so that we inform them about the new developments Acting President of the Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators in Nigeria, Huan al Haj Abdullah Hibutu, said the association is satisfied with the training. I would just uh, appreciate NACON for doing this such kind of a pro program year by year. Whenever there is any policies, they will make sure that they call us to, to order, train our staffs on how to go about it. We are really grateful to, to NACON for, 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 for this. They are, doing, they are doing a wonderful job. Ihram, or declaration of intention, is one of the pillars of Hajj or Umrah. When and why are pilgrims expected to declare intention or assume Ihram for Hajj or Umrah? What are the do's and don'ts for those in the state of Ihram? Ihram uh, simply did not. On Hajj Talk tonight, Sheikh Khidr Maraya provides answers to these and other questions. He begins by explaining the position of Ihram in the course of the Hajj or Umrah. Ihram uh, simply denotes intention. And it is an obligation as far as the conduct of the pilgrimage and also the lesser pilgrimage is concerned. Therefore, any Hajj that has been conducted by any worshipper and the Hajj is devoid of Ihram, such 
Hajj is considered by the Sharia as null and void. When assuming the Ihram, must it be at the Mikat? Going into the state of Ihram as it affects position is divided into three. You can enter the state of Ihram before Mikat. You can enter the state of Ihram at Mikat, which is the most preferable of the three. You can enter the state of Ihram after Mikat, but with a caveat. Once that is done, no one can say that your intention has not been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you have entered into the state of Ihram after passing Mikat. But there must be an expiation. One must sacrifice an animal. What type of cloth is allowed for men and for women to wear? Intending male pilgrims are expected to use two garments, preferably white. One loin and one to use to cover their body. Only two. But intending female pilgrims can use any form of dress provided the dress is not very gorgeous you understand they are permitted to do that yeah but once it is very very gorgeous then recommendably they are expected not to use it but in te uh, a female intending pilgrim can use their uniform can use their brocade can use uh, their jalabia or any form of dress when declaring intention, pilgrims are expected to take ritual bath, cut their nails and hair, among others. It is also not an obligation. It is not an obligation, but it is something that is highly recommendable. It is a sunnah. If one uh, enters the state of Ihram without, conducted, without conducting the ritual bath, their intention or their Ihram is acceptable. It does not affect their heart. The only thing one can say is that uh, such a person has really lost a great share of reward. While in Ihram, it is forbidden for men to wear socks, glove, or tie a piece of cloth to cover their heads. It is also not allowed for men and women to cover their faces, have intercourse, or kiss among others. What happens when pilgrims violate these rules of Ihram unintended? For instance, Mr. A has entered the state of Ihram. Subsequently, he began to trim their fingernail because he has forgotten. He has forgotten that he is now in the state of Ihram. A fellow intending pilgrim now reminded him, Ah, why are you trimming your finger? Oh, subhanallah. He has now remembered that he is now in the state of Ihram. Such an intending pilgrim has been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No atonement, no expiation is expected from him. What about those who violate the rules intentionally? As somebody who does it intentionally, you understand, they are expected to expiate what they have done against the rule. And what they are expected to do is as follows. He has been given option to do any of the three. One, to fast for three days. Two, if he is not willing to fast for three days, then he can feed six needies. Thirdly, he can equally sacrifice an animal, at least a goat. This week on Spotlight, we focus on Kaduna State Pilgrims Welfare Board. When the state was carved out of Kaduna State on the 23rd of September 1987, by the then government of General Ibrahim Babangida, it adopted the same edict used by the old Kaduna state to manage its Hajj affairs. al Muhammad Muhammad Aburimi is the executive secretary of Kaduna State Pilgrims Welfare Board. He talks more about its mandate. It's to organize 
supervise the conduct of the yearly Hajj ritual of the uh, pilgrims emanating from Kasana State for their welfare, their transportation, accommodation, both at home and uh, in the Holy Land, as well as the well-being of the pilgrims. The board carries out this mandate in collaboration with the National Hajj Commission. There is nothing that we do outside the tenets that establish the National Hajj Commission. We have the pilgrims and National Hajj Commission has the coordination capacity. They enter into agreements with the of, uh, various uh, government agencies and private agencies that are responsible for the conduct of Hajj in the Kingdom on behalf of Nigerian pilgrims. For better service delivery to Katsina State pilgrims, the State Governor Amin Bella Masari ensures that the board is adequately funded to carry out its functions. This year, Katsina State Government voted 1.2 billion Naira for the welfare of Katsina State pilgrims. It goes into payment of officials that will oversee the Hajj, both their Esther code their air ticket, their accommodation is shouldered by the government. There is one unique uh, gesture that is, uh, has been the tradition of Kasana State Government. Every year it gives out as Goran Salah 300 Saudi Riyal per pilgrim. Effective planning Early preparations as well as synergy among the different units are taken seriously at the board. The board and the management association as I, they will put us together and work together with harmony. And also carry along all the, intent, all the officials along with, the, with them. That will make them succeed. Uh, if you neglect even the messenger, you don't need to give him his, uh, his, uh, his uh, due. Uh, you may find him difficult. He may not carry out the services as you want. And that's why you, can, you get failure. As part of its plans for 2018 Hajj, the board, in collaboration with NACON, ensure that pilgrims from Katsina State have a befitting accommodation that is closer to the Haram in Mecca. We travel to secure the accommodation of pilgrims in Saudi Arabia. We are able to... Uh, select some houses almost very close to Haram Pasi because uh, we have moved from where we are uh, in Masfala and move a little so that we can reduce the distance of walking to Haram. As the mandatory biometric data capturing of pilgrims across the country gets underway, because other state pilgrims are not left out in the exercise. Pilgrims captured in the system express satisfaction with the procedure adopted. I ran them because the album, Alhamdulillah, I'm not going to be a person. Then the new Kane albums at you, Zamuza Agama Manawa. Banga Bata Luka Chiba. So any Ekarama who must have won a Kama Akafara, Kumagashan, Alhamdulillah, Muruga Mungama. To overcome aged long challenges in Hajj management, now can introduce various reforms such as the national medical team flat rate of BTA and accommodation deal among others. Katsuna State is satisfied with the reforms and adopted them in its operations. In their own wisdom, the Nahakon decided that uh, there should be a contributory national team for medical. States will contribute 60 percent of the personnel, while National Health Commission contributes 40 percent. And the other way around, states contribute 40% of the funding, while Nahakon contributes 60%. Uh, it brings a lot of succor to the states. Katsuna State Pilgrims paid 1.4 million Naira as the fare for the 2018 Hajj just as last year, but with a difference of 35,000 Naira less this year. The pilgrims will also get $800 as their basic travel allowance, BTA, which is over 240,000 Naira.
Africa's other state pilgrims welfare board secured grade A rating from Nakan after meeting all requirements of the commission. The board's performance in various aspects of Hajj management earned it awards nationally and internationally. <laughs> Yeah.